Right, what's happening, people? And welcome back to the Joey Knight podcast. Now, I know you lot want me to be talking Chelsea every time I upload, but don't worry, there will be plenty of Chelsea-based content coming every single week to this channel. So, if that's your cup of tea, you're in the right place. However, at the start of this Premier League season and throughout, we will be covering all things Premier League. And in today's video, we are going to be talking Arsenal Football Club. Now, Mikel Arteta shocked even the most optimistic of Arsenal fans last season, where with only a couple of games to go, Arsenal almost had one hand on the trophy, but the powerhouse that is Manchester City ended up nipping them to the trophy to secure a third league title in a row. But instead of feeling hard done by and licking their wounds, Arsenal have clearly decided to go again, smashing their transfer record and Declan Rice this summer, as well as bringing in a few other big names and therefore making it clear for all to see what their ambitions are this season. But can Arsenal go on to lift the Premier League this season? Here to help me discuss it is lifelong Arsenal fan, Dan. Dan, what's happening, mate? He's now, he's now. And we're also happy to be joined by Manchester United fan, Sonny. Arsenal have obviously gone big in this transfer window, bringing mm. in Timber, mm. Rice, and obviously most importantly of all, your new number <laughs> nine that you're all going to get to know very, very well over the course of this season, Kai Havertz. <laughs> You'll have a bit less hair at the end of this season watching that boy up top here, <laughs> I promise you. But what do you think of Arsenal's transfer window so far? And also, in your opinion, are they done now in the transfer window? Um, I mean, first of all, I think the the window that we've had, like as you rightly said, it's a signal of intent. Do you know what I mean? We, we, we came so close last year, but just fell short. Um, you know, injuries, dip in form just at the wrong time. Um, but I think the group stayed solid. I think the manager, the club, everyone's sort of driving in the same direction. So the signings that we've made have been in key areas as well. So for me, that gives me more confidence going into the season. Timber, I think, is a great piece of business. We were looking mm -hmm. at signing him. So I'm not saying that because I'm like, God, I wish we had him. But, you know, they wanted Lissandra Martinez last season. We got him. They got Timber this season. We wanted him. So I guess it's kind of worked out nicely. I think Rice, what, what more needs to be said about Muller? Rice, Rice, baby. Who don't need Declan Rice? <laughs> yeah. in the team? Unbelievable season last year. Everyone wanted him. I know City, City fans can say, listen, we've got Rodri, but... Why would you say no to Declan Ryan? So Arsenal, great bit of business. And then, of course, we fall to Kai Havertz, who could be starting number nine for Arsenal come this season. I know people say, oh, he could be the number eight. There's one thing that I think the Arsenal do lack this season. Maybe Dan might agree to this, and that is losing a player like Xhaka. Yeah, fine. He's not the most amazing central midfield player, but he was a leader. He had something about him that many of the other f players at Arsenal, I don't think have. Is that, that fighting spirit? We saw that at Anfield, for example, where, fine, there was a capitulation, but... He was the one who was kind of squaring up to everyone, showed a bit of oomph. Now, I think him going might be a miss, but got Declan Rice, Odegaard, still a very good team, Dan. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I was never I was never Granite's biggest fan. Um, he, he sort of grew on me as the uh, last couple of seasons have gone on. And to be fair, you know, he's, he's rolled up his sleeves and he's, he's done really well. I mean, last season he was amazing. Mm. And I think it's just obviously the manager played him in the right position. Gave him a, a, a perfect dance partner with Thomas Party or interchanging with, with Odegaard and stuff like that. So he came good. And, mm. and I'm glad that for him and the Arsenal fans, we got to see the granite jacker that we should have originally been seeing years before. As I say, I think leadership wise, I think Declan Rice was that kind of man for West Ham. So it's going to be a role I think that he's going to grow into as his Arsenal career uh, blossoms. And then obviously, you know, you've got Party there, his experience. Odegaard may seem quiet, but I think a lot of these boys, especially when you watch like the the Prime documentary. All or Nothing, yeah. Yeah, if you watch All or Nothing and you go in there, you can see that there's characters throughout the team. So I think gone are the days, well, not gone are the days, but I think, you know, back in the day, we'd probably say, you know, our, our captain has to be really vocal, <laughs> this, that and the other. He has to shout and knock heads together, you know, like Roy Keane or maybe like, job. yeah, you know, yeah, to, you know, Tony Adams or whatever. But I think it's done in a different way now. I think uh, Declan Rice for me is going to be the man that he's going to grow into that role. He's going to be there. But as I say, you've got people with experience like Aaron Ramsdale, Gabriel, you know, Kieran Tierney, you know, he's, he's, he's quite vocal. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I think from that side, I think we'll be good. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what we do with 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 Kai Havertz. I mean, uh... well, let's quickly touch on that. Obviously, okay. Jesus has picked up an injury in preseason. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I would say, yeah, and I was saying this earlier, whenever Jesus has been injured, and this might just be saying I've picked up on and I could be wrong on it, but I'm sure these lot let me know in the comments. Whenever Jesus has been injured, he's been ruled out for, let's say, four weeks or so. And it's always ended up being like eight weeks. 
or, or longer. He's always, he's never come back from injury on time. Even when he was at Man City, he always used to stretch out a little bit. So the way I'm looking at it is you're without him for the first month of the season, 100%. Oh, yeah. 100% you're without him for the first month. Yeah, yeah. He actually had some form of minor surgery I on I think that, so, yeah. I that read injury. that as well, yeah. I'm not um, too sure on the details of it, but yeah, there was minor surgery, I think. The obvious thing would be to say that Eddie Nketiah slots right in there. I mean, he looked quite good against Monaco the other day. He's looked decent enough in pre-season. Obviously, you've got Balogun coming back. I don't know whether he'll be loaned out again, sold, or whether he'll stay at Arsenal. But I have just got a very sneaky feeling that you lot are going to see Kai Havertz wow. playing up front. I'm not convinced, and I think we've had this conversation before, as him being a number nine. Can he score goals? Yeah, he's proved he can score goals in the Premier League. He's proved he can score goals in Champions League, all that kind of stuff. That's fine. But it, just his body type, the way he moves as a player, for me, I just don't think he can do a whole season at, at, at nine. Yeah, I think maybe a couple of games, possibly. But I think the way that we play as a team you can kind of alternate that front three to put anyone you want in there and they can score goals. Like we saw when we lost Jesus after the World, well, during the World Cup. We came back, you know, we had Trossard, Saka, you know, Odegaard, you know, Enketia was playing as well. So we've got players there that can score goals. I mean, going on to the, the Balogun issue, I think, I think we're going to see him sold. I think he mm. has a very, very high opinion of himself like uh, and the job he can do and I feel he 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 believes that he should be starting games me personally I think he needs to do it in an Arsenal shirt however what he's probably got over Eddie and Ketia is that he's gone over to the French league he's banged in about 15 16 mm. goals he's like third in the scoring charts behind Mbappe do you know what I'm saying it's like he thinks he deserves his chance I think he deserves his chance I'd like to see what he can do Eddie and Ketia again as a, a season long number nine I mean, he's had his chances. He comes up with some goals. I like him, but I just don't think he's what we need. I think we need someone who's a bit more consistent. I say give Balogun a go. If you're going to sell him, let's just let's just give him a go and let's, let's see how he goes. But um, but yeah. Moving on to Mikel Arteta. Obviously, he came into Arsenal. He won that FA Cup and I think his first full season. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And obviously, look, he's had his fair share of ups and downs. He's been accused at times of, you know, not having the sort of killer instinct to be able to get things over the line that top level managers have. Obviously, there was the season when it was perceived that Arsenal had bottled the top four a little bit. Mm -hmm. Last season, almost mm -hmm. sort of could be perceived as they bottled the title a little bit. I mm -hmm. would probably lean in that favour because I think that once you're in a position, expectations change. So as much as you could say, if you had told me at the start of the season that we would finish, yeah, all right, brilliant. But we're not living in the past. In the here and now, yep. you would expect your club to get that done, in my opinion, right? But there could be an argument, as much as a lot of people, including myself, do rate Mikel Arteta, there could be an argument that last season was your chance. We've had it before with managers of football clubs that they have sort of had their chance and it hasn't transpired that they've challenged to the exact same level in seasons to come after that. We saw it with Brendan Rodgers at Liverpool. We saw it with Pochettino yeah, I was uh, say. at Spurs in the 16-17 season when Chelsea won it. You know, Spurs came second. Rafa Benitez mm -hmm. at Liverpool. I know he won Champions Eight, nine, League, yeah. but that 9 season, they, they smashed uh, Man United at 4-1 when, let's be honest, Old Trafford was for probably decades before that, an absolute fortress. Yeah. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Man United team that finished second in the season and didn't transpire to go on to challenge again. Mm. There's multiple examples, isn't there, of managers who hadn't challenged before, yeah. did challenge in a one-off season and then didn't come again. As much as I say that, there's also multiple examples of managers that did and yeah. did sustain that intensity of being able to challenge and push whoever the league leaders are at the time. Yeah. So do you think that Mikel Arteta can build on what he had done last season in terms of his individual performance as a manager, being able to pull a team to that level? Or do you think with the addition of Champions League football, heightened expectations that will come from not only their performance last season, but also the work they've done in the transfer window, do you think he can keep up the pace? Well, we're about to find out, aren't we? Um, <laughs> I think personally... I think he's gonna he's gonna show a lot of people that he's 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 got the mentality for this kind of thing. The, he's got the the drive, the determination. You know, people are saying, "Oh, we're well, gonna have Champions League next season." Yeah, but we also had Europa League last season, so we're gonna have the same amount of competitions. It, depending on how we treat each one of those competitions is gonna be interesting. 
Um, obviously, we'll probably see, you know, the League Cup will probably field reserves or whoever. FA Cup again, it might be like, you know, not the strongest mm. team. But I think we'll, we'll go all guns blazing for Champions League and the league. And, and then as I say, with the additions that we've got, we've got cover now. So if, you know, the Rolls Royce that is Willy Saliba gets injured, <laughs> I haven't got to think about, you know, Rob Holding coming in and giving me <laughs> nightmares. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, I love Rob Holding, but, you know, it's 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 about getting the, the quality in those positions now. Um, but I think Mikhail Arteta, he's, he's done well. I think he's done well to change the look of the club. Do you know what I mean? When when Wenger left, um, all right, we won an FA Cup under Arteta, but I mean, all those years under Emery and, you know, like even when, you know, a couple of seasons ago when we sort of bottled top four, it kind of was a bit like, oh, do you know what I mean? But he's turned it around. He's weeded out all of the clicks, all of the, you know, the bad eggs. Samyang. Oh, God, you know, uh, you know Klasenac, Ozil, all of those. Oh, yeah. you, could, you could just go through the list. And he's created something now with players that want to play for him. Um, and it's it's I think that's the telltale sign you've got a good manager there mm. when when top class players are saying I want to play for this guy mm. you know he's he's a genius uh, I, I can't remember exactly but I think it was either Zinchenko they were talking to or somebody and they they were along that line you know the guy's a genius I, I love playing for him and that that's what you want you want committed players if it was Zinchenko I, see, I think you know having worked under Pep Guardiola that's quite the endorsement and if he's saying that Mikel Arteta yeah. is a genius yeah. do you know what I think um, I think if I'm an Arsenal fan which I'm far from one but <laughs> if I was I'd be very optimistic about you know both my players and my manager going mm -hmm. into this season before Absolutely. we get into the the eleven, actually is that your expectation to challenge for the title 100 percent. it's got to be uh, i think you can't sort of start letting the excuses rack up early you've got to be like well this is the intention i think the signings have done that mm. they're, they're they're the first marker down to say like right we're spending big money we're bringing in big players we're coming for, for that that league title i mean i you know heart and head normally don't match up I normally say, oh yeah, I'd like us to, but I don't think, but I'm going in confident. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, put my, my, my nail in the door. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're going for it. So I think we finish first. I think we end that Ooh. little bit of City dominance. I can't see them winning another league again. They've got phenomenal players. Don't get me wrong. They are a phenomenal team, you know, like racked with stars, but sooner or later, you know, somebody does come in and challenge. We've done that slightly last year, but I think now we've got what it takes to, try and push it over the line. And I think just to add as well, I'm hoping it's Arsenal just to have a personal <laughs> selfish perspective because I'm going to say this now, if City win the fourth Premier League in a row, I think that ends any debate of the best Premier League side of all time. You can talk about Chelsea's back-to-back, -back, Arsenal Invincibles, R3P, 99 treble, even City Centurions, but to win four in a row is unprecedented. I don't think anyone's done it in the Premier League era. I don't think anyone's done it in English football era. I think the most anyone's won was three, be that Huddersfield back in the 1920s. Arsenal, I think I've done it before. Liverpool, us, City. But to win four in a row, that is very, very telling. But just a quick thing to add with Mikel Arteta and Arsenal. He won the FA Cup when he came through halfway through that season. Yeah. Well, I think it was COVID season, wasn't it? Where uh, yeah, just yeah, Unfortunately, yeah. they beat your mob in the final. But anyway. Cheers, Frank Lampard. <laughs> <laughs> Seasons after, Arteta's moulded his team. So now it's got to the stage where it's his team and I think sooner rather than later, they have to win a league. And just before you go into the your XI, just a question I need to ask is, would you be happy with an FA Cup? Because I think the Champions League is one of them where Arsenal don't have the best history in the Champions League. Europe is one of them ones for Arsenal. Plus, first season back, it's going to be interesting. The league with City, other teams might challenge. Would you be happy with an FA Cup? Because that is a sign of trophies, which I think Arteta definitely wants. Yeah, look, I mean, any, any trophy is a good trophy. I mean, you know, Spurs would kill for <laughs> something, wouldn't they? Look. Would I settle for an FA Cup? I'd probably say no, I'd be more disappointed with, mm -hmm. with just finishing with an FA Cup because the team that we've got, the Champions League for me, yeah, you're right, you know, sort of, we've never really, I mean, apart from getting to that final yeah. one years ago, we've never really, you know, got any any further forward with that. Um, and I'm, I've never really been as a fan that bothered about European competition. Yeah, it's nice, you get some good games and some good away days and that. I don't really care. I mean, all I care about is my team being champions of England and that's mm. it. So if Arsenal weren't to do that and then you're saying, well, there's an FA Cup. Yes, it's silverware. Would I say no? Of course not. But where we are as a team, where we're looking to go, you've got to start having that mentality to say, well, no, that isn't good enough. With what we've got, we should be doing more. 
So I would say that it would be, you know, not really a successful season for me. I would be expecting a little bit more. At least that's the community shield written off then as well. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a touch from what you just said there, right? right go on. Not that bothered about European competition. If I'm an Arsenal fan, yeah, mm. I'm sitting there thinking, all right, yeah, albeit 20 years ago, the last time we did it, but we've won the we've won the top flight many a time. Yeah, mm. you've never won a major European competition. So would cup you say, cup, man. We, cup <laughs> oh, cup keep winners. reminding you cup of this. Fuck God. Yeah, now that's mate, not a major one. That's yeah. it. Yeah, mate, come on. <laughs> but right, right go you've on. never won the Champions League. Of course okay? not. No. Are you saying that this season, yeah, if you were to secure top four again, which mm -hmm. you would do by winning the Champions League, mm -hmm. you would take a Premier League title this season over a Champions League? Bearing in mind that, yes, I know Arsenal fans have had their sights set on that Premier League mm. title since the resurgence under Mikel Arteta, but surely. Surely this season, if I could say to you, okay, you don't win the Premier League title, yeah, City get a fourth, but you do win the Champions League, would you not take that? Well, of course I would take it, if that's <laughs> you're going to give me that option, but you're asking me as a no, fan. No, but if you do have the option, you've got one this season, you can win the Premier League or the Champions League, what one are you taking? Premier League, because as I say, for me, I'm, I've am i always been that way, that's been my mentality. Mm. I've never really sort of like, I, I don't hold the European competition above my own country's competition. I do. I just, I think that's crazy. You're a Chelsea you, fan. You, so you've won sense. Premier League titles. Yeah. It's still the best feeling to know that when your team walks out the following season, that's when the commentators say, and here come the champions. Do you know what I'm saying? That for me is, is better. You know, don't get me wrong. Like if, if a, a Champions League is presented. Yeah. Yeah, let's go for it. I mean, we had the opportunity. I was, I was with a whole load of gooners up at like Finsbury Park. We was watching the game. We didn't do it. It was soul destroying. We had our chance there, mm. you know, whichever way you look at it. That was taken away from us, big style. But as I say, you know, if you're going to put a gun to my head, I'm going to say win the league. I'm going to be a champion. This is a very good debate as well, Joey. People say, what would you rather win the Premier League, Champions League? People say, oh, 38, le 38 league games need to be consistent. Whereas with the Champions League, what you get out your group stages, you get a nice draw, you could win it. But it's an interesting question. I think if a Forest fan was here, <laughs> I think yeah. they say something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. That's the one thing with the European Cup competition, and it's a thing that I think haunted Chelsea for a while, haunted City for a while, is you're not a big club if you don't win. I'm not saying Arsenal aren't a big club. Of course they're a big club. Yeah, I still yeah. say they're the third biggest club in England. But the fact that they haven't won, even a UEFA Cup or Europa League, I think it's beggar's belief. A club like Arsenal, I think it's crazy. I think the season where you could have won the Europa League and Chelsea, once again, they seem like they're your biggest rivals, they say, not Spurs. Mm. They beat you in the final in Baku. Mm. That could have been it. But I just think Arsenal... Once they win that European Cup, I think the pride of London will definitely be back in the colour of red, that's for sure. Do you know what I would pick right now as a Chelsea fan between the Premier League title and the Champions League? What do you think I'd pick? Champions, Champions League. League. Really? No I'll pick the Premier League title right now. But we've won the Champions League twice. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I'm saying. I'm not saying whatever. I'd pick the Premier League title. Yeah. Also would. We've gone, it was 2017, last time we won it. This is the longest we've ever really gone in my conscious life as a, Ch as a Chelsea fan, if you're talking 98 onwards or whatever, this is the longest, really, that we've gone without lifting a Premier League trophy. So for me, I'd want to see us lift a Premier League title again. Mm -hmm. But that's because we won the Champions League. So what I'm saying is my, my look... Perception is, is key. Yeah, my perception as a Chelsea fan is, you know, you should be wanting to win the Champions yeah. League because you haven't won it. But yeah. all that being said, we're digressing. <laughs> Dan, I want your ideal 11 and the 11 that you believe can push you to that Premier League title this season for Arsenal. Right, OK. Well, it's got to be Aaron Ramsdale in goal. Then at the back, going to be uh, Gareth Southgate's best friend, Ben White. <laughs> um, in the middle, Rolls-Royce, Willie Saliba. Um, again, uh, alongside uh, Gabriel. Um, for me, I'd play Kieran Tierney at left back. Mm. Um, I like Zinchenko, but for me, Tierney's, Tierney's my guy. Um, and then in the midfield, I'm going to go Party, Rice and Odegaard. Um, and then on the left-hand side up front, we'll have Martinelli. Right-hand side, we'll have Saka. And then obviously, if he is fit, Jesus. And if not? But if not, um, I'd say stick Eddie in there. I know I did say earlier that he's probably not the whole season man, but I, we're looking like we're going to sell Balogun. I don't think he's going to get his chance. He's got like limited time between now and the start of the season to prove to the manager that he should be in front of Eddie. So I think Eddie would just then get the nod. But then, as I say, you can interchange that front mm. three so easy. You've got the likes of Trossard. You've got Emil Smith-Rowe. You know, you've got, you got good quality players to come on. Uh, Havertz obviously is going to is going to play a part in that as well. So they're all going to get their chance, and they're all going to play. And as I say, um, that for me is probably like our strongest team. I think most of us here would 
agree that that is a strong team and mm -hmm. Arsenal are definitely building something special there whether you're a rival opposition fan or not I think you could agree that the depth now that Arsenal have got is pretty scary going forward but I want to know your lots of thoughts where do you think Arsenal are finishing in the league this season and what do you think of everything we spoke about in this video when this video drops I will be in the comments I'll be trying to respond to all of you so let me know your thoughts and I will see you all in the next one